little bit of context. I'm a 17 year old male. I'm a junior in high school and I live in northern Georgia. And I work pretty much every day after school. It's pretty crappy, I know. But it's one of the only ways I can pay for my phone, gas, and my countless other hobbies. On the weekends, I of course am out of school, and I don't have to work. I love to spend my time off in the wilderness. I camp, hike, fish, you name it. I love my parents, because ever since I turned 16, and I had my license, they let me go off adventuring by myself. Anyways, ever since the pandemic started getting worse, I've been out of school and I've had a lot of less hours at work. However, this has also caused most campsites and hiking trails to become closed as well. Luckily, my grandpa owns a large chunk of land up in the Appalachian Mountains, right next to a river. It's honestly weird that I haven't been up there before. So, after weeks of boredom, I decided I would ask him if I could spend a weekend from Friday to Sunday at his property. He reluctantly agreed. One that stood out was the warning that he gave me. He warned me that some of the locals near the property have seen some messed up animals up there. I assured him that I would be fine, telling him that they were probably just malnourished coyotes or something. I really wanted to get out in the outdoors, and I wasn't going to let some wild animals ruin it for me. But I was a tad bit nervous after hearing that, but not that much. I told my grandpa I would bring my hunting knife with me, and he agreed to let me drive up there and spend the weekend at his property. I was pumped. All of this virus stuff got me really cooped up inside my house, and I was ecstatic to finally go enjoy the great outdoors again. I packed up the next day and began the hour-long drive up to the property. Once I arrived, I had to unlock a gate and drive my truck through, and then lock it again and make sure nobody else drove through and to deter trespassers. My grandpa's very stingy on who was allowed on his land. It's a shocker that I'm even allowed to go up there. I'll try to give you a basic idea of what the property looks like. You pull onto the property, kind of diagonal to the road, and go through the gate. Then you drive through the dirt some, and then cross a bridge that goes over the river. It looks sketchy, but it's actually quite sturdy. After the bridge, you turn right down a road made by my grandpa's truck and drive down that road until you reach a field that my grandpa mows on occasion. He only lives 30 minutes from the property. The property extends a little further into the woods, but that's about it. As soon as I parked the truck, I immediately felt uneasy. I know it sounds cliche, but I felt eyes on me. I ignored it, chalking it up to me being unfamiliar in the area. My plan for camping was to set up my hammock right next to the river, and set up tarps above and below it. I took a long while, but I eventually found a suitable spot. As far as food goes, I had brought my portable stove and grill, as well as hot dog and hamburger ingredients stuff to make sandwiches, and some eggs and bacon. But I also intended on catching fish, and having a fish fright the night before I would leave. The more time I stayed on the property, the lesser I felt eyes watching me. 
I arrived late that day. So, by the time that I was situated, the sun was starting to go down. I cooked myself a hot dog, drank some Pepsi, and made myself a small fire. I was right next to the river, and honestly, sitting next to it by the fire and watching the sun go down was the most relaxing thing I could imagine. At around 11, I decided to call it a night. I put out the fire and then climbed to my hammock to get some rest. This is where things started to get weird. I fell asleep pretty quickly, and then I started dreaming. What happened to me has never happened to me before, and never again since then. I had the most vivid dream that I have experienced. No, it wasn't a dream. It was a nightmare. It was almost as I was actually there. I now know I was looking through the eyes of someone or something. It started in the field, pacing around. It was, I would say, around 200 feet from my campsite. It started moving towards it, stepping through the thick brush to get to the bank where I had set up my hammock. I could see myself sleeping in the hammock. I then woke up, terrified, and checked my watch and it was around 2 o'clock. I began hearing something moving closer to my campsite. I picked up my flashlight and shined it in the direction of the sound. Nothing. I sighed. I must have just been hearing things because of the nightmare I just had. What scared me about the dream was how real it felt. I stayed awake, processing what had just happened. I don't know when, but I eventually fell asleep. I woke up around 8 the next morning, remembering what had happened. I don't know why, but I laughed at myself. Because at the time I thought I was getting worked up over nothing. I should have just left then and there. But I stayed, not understanding how weird what just happened was. The day was a blast. I fished, I swam, I hiked a little bit, and I had a giant fish fry that night. After stuffing my face with trout, I made another fire and soaked in the beauty of the land once again. After vibing by the fire, I once again decided to call it a night. As soon as I got into my hammock, I instantly thought about what happened to me the night before. Now that it was dark and quiet out, I felt afraid. I tried and tried, but I couldn't fall asleep. Around one when I was just starting to fade, I got hit with this overwhelming amount of dread. I was instantly wide awake. I grabbed my flashlight and knife out of my bag. I laid in my hammock, terrified, not knowing what to do. It was then that I heard one of the worst sounds that I have ever heard. It sounded like a woman screaming like she was getting murdered, combined with this low, demonic growl. God, it scares the absolute piss out of me just thinking about this. I wanted to run to my truck and get the heck out of there. But there was no way I was going out there with God knows what. I sat there for so long, thinking that I would die out there. As if things couldn't get any worse, I started to hear approaching footsteps. I remembered back to last night and the dream that I saw. 
I'm going to die. I kept thinking. I should have listened to my grandpa. I'm such an idiot. Right when the thing was about to reach my hammock, it stopped. I could hear heavy breathing. I don't know why, but I had a massive urge to shine my flashlight on whatever was there. I don't know why, but I needed to see it. I quickly turned on my flashlight and aimed it right at this horrible monstrosity. It was tall, gangly, and was squatting on the ground. Its face. Oh god, its face. I'm shitting bricks just writing this, but I swear to god, it looked exactly like that deformed person from that famous Russian sleep experiment picture. Deformed teeth, huge eyes, everything. Worst of all, it was smiling. Why in the world was it smiling? I didn't have any time to think before it leaps towards me. I jerked myself backwards and flipped out of my hammock. The thing missed me by inches. I began a full sprint to my truck. Hearing that thing chasing after me, it was screaming and growling. I'm convinced that this thing was from the deepest pit of hell. I was almost to my truck, and thank god that I had my keys in my pocket. If I hadn't, I would have been a goner for sure that night. I hopped in my truck, just in the nick of time. It rammed it in my door and tried opening it. I was frightened how intelligent this thing was. I sped off, ramming the gate open and speeding down the road, leaving everything at the camp except for everything that was on my person. I grabbed the only other thing that I had, my phone, and I called my grandpa. It took about three tries, but he eventually answered, pissed. I told him that I needed to stay at his house for the night, and I would explain everything when I got there. Once I got there, I told him what happened. After hearing my story, he berated me for not calling the police. He thought that I had some crackhead trying to rob me, and that he would definitely be gone by now because I didn't call the police. He told me to get some sleep and that uh, we would check it out in the morning. As soon as he went back into his bedroom, what happened hit me like a brick wall. And I began breaking down, crying. I didn't get an ounce of sleep that night. When we investigated the property and campsite, we saw big footprints with very sharp toenails. Worst of all was the campsite itself. The thing had tore everything to pieces, leaving huge claw marks everywhere. To this day, I haven't seen the same look on my grandpa's face. He told me to pick up what I could, and that we were getting the hell out of there. I salvaged what I could, and then drove back to my house. I told my parents, and they both are thinking the same thing that my grandpa said. After that, my parents never let me go into the wilderness alone again. It didn't bother me one bit. The outdoors will never be the same to me ever again. My parents told me a few days ago that my grandpa was selling the property for what they said were unrelated reasons. I really hope that what I saw was just some deformed drug addict and that my scared mind perceived it as a monster. 
But those screams, that phase, the dream I had, they all say otherwise.